Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. My name is Alia Anwar and I'm the co-founder of Alista Learning Center in Serambang. Last week, I shared about dyslexia and few intervention strategies to help children with dyslexia cope with their daily life and also in school. Today, I would like to share about ADHD. So if you do have any question, you may ask so in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer them later. So what are we going to cover today? So today we are going to cover about the definition of ADHD, the characteristic of ADHD, and number three, how is ADHD diagnosed? So what is ADHD? So ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. It's one of the common neurological disorders that affect children and adults. So ADHD is divided into three types inattentive, hyperactive impulsive, and combination of hyper inattentive and hyperactive Im impulsive. So what is attentive? Attentive means easily distracted, poor concentration, uh, poor organ organizational skill, and also they tend to daydreaming a lot. So hyperactive impulsive means that they are risk always interrupting, difficulty to stay on a task, um, never seem to slow down and always on the go. And next one is combination of inattentive and hyperactive impulsive, means that they have inability to focus and inability to stay still or control behavior. Oopsie. So what is char the characteristic of ADHD? So, um, Self-focused behavior, so inability to recognize other people's needs and desire. This leads to the next two signs, which are difficulty to wait for turn. So maybe during classroom activity or when playing games with other children, they have problem to wait for their turn and to let other people play first. Okay. Next one, interrupting. So interrupt others while they are talking or part into conversation or games that they are not part of. So they might also use other people's things without permission. So what do I mean by use, not use, uh, using other people's things without permission? Means that, um, so while waiting for the owner to give permission, so because they are difficult to wait, so they can't wait for the owner to give permission, so they just, they just might just snatch the thing away. Okay. Next one is fidgeting. So tap hand, okay, they like to tap their hands or free, or they like to scream in the seat or feeling restless while waiting or sitting down. Next one is emotional turmoil. So difficulty to keep their emotion in check. So they may have outbursts of anger at inappropriate time. So for example, while waiting uh, in line to play, the child might be restless while waiting and this feeling of restless might make him angry or upset. So hence the child will start to cry or show temper as a sign of frustration. So next one is unfinished tasks. So they may show interest in a lot of things, but they have difficulty to complete them. So they may start a project, uh, a chores or homework, but they move on to the next thing that catches their interest without completing the previous task or the previous activity. Next one is mistakes. So they often make careless mistakes as they want things to be done quickly and they rush to complete their work and they might also skip some of the activity. Next one is daydreaming. So this is very common for those children with ADHD um, inattentive. So they may stray into space or think about other things and ignore what's going on around them. Okay, there's more characteristics. So avoid tasks that require sustained mental effort. So sometimes when they lack focus, um, can cause children to avoid activities that require sustained uh, mental effort. Like for example, paying attention in class or doing activity that require mental effort like reading, writing, okay, or doing homework. Uh, the next one is difficulty to follow instructions. So difficulty to complete homework or certain activity and also difficulty to follow multiple step instructions. Next one is lack of focus. So difficulty to stay focused. Like for example, when you have a conversation with them, they may look like 
uh, they are hearing you and they may say that, yes, I hear you. But when you ask them, that, okay, repeat back what I say, they may have difficulty to repeat back or to recall back what you say. Okay. Next one is not able to sit, um, to stay seated. As to stay seated. So they need movement. They need to move around. Okay, especially those ADHD with hyperactivity, um, impulsive. Uh, so they need movement. They need to uh, move around. So probably in a in a classroom, they tend to walk around the classroom, disturb their classmate. Okay. So the next one is forgetfulness. So maybe they forget daily tasks like brushing teeth or after going to the toilet, uh, flush your toilet, or they might misplace their toy or misplace their homework. Next one is talking, um, a lot of talking. So they may talk about, for example, they may talk about their dog and before they have finished the story about their dog, they may talk about their grandmother. And before the grandmother's story finished, they may talk about their grandfather's. Uh, so they, they have a lot of topic to talk about, but somehow the topic, um, there's no ending to one story. Yeah. So next one is difficulty to organize. So difficulty to manage time, keep track of their tasks, and activity and difficulty to prioritize work. So for example, they know they have a project they need to submit on Monday, but uh, on Saturday night, or sorry, on Sunday night only they start preparing their, their, their project. Okay. Next one is difficulty to play quietly. So as they're always on the go, um, it's difficult for them to engage calmly in leisure activity. They may also get upset you know, sometimes when playing in a group because they are unable to take turn, share, for example. So it is difficult to diagnose a child with ADHD. Okay? All children struggle with paying attention, listening and follow direction. Sit still or wait for their turn. But kids with ADHD, the struggles are harder and it happens more frequently. So, how is ADHD diagnosed? Okay. So, when you feel or notice your child regularly displays signs of ADHD and this behavior is affecting their daily life, difficulty to maintain healthy relationship with friends and difficulty to adapt with school. So, for example, their, their friends might isolate them as they have difficulty to engage in positive communication. So, as um, children with ADHD tend to dominate the conversation and, it, and, and they don't give chance for others to join in the conversation. So, affecting their daily life as they might forget where they put their stuff, their things, and this will cause frustrate, uh, frustration to the child and also to the parents. So, who do you see to diagnose my child with ADHD? So, what you can do is you can talk to your local pediatrician um, about your concern. Uh, then later, the pets will write a referral letter for you to bring to the hospital. So they, um, the hospital will then refer you to a child psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist. So from there, they will help, uh, they will help and guide you to do intervention. And they might refer you to maybe behavioral therapies or occupational therapies or also speech therapies. Okay. So usually they will start to diagnose, um, start to diagnose when the child reaches seven years old or maybe older. But there are some children that show a very clear characteristic of ADHD at a young age, probably three years old or four years old. So the characteristic um, have to happen at multiple settings. So at school, at home, or in shopping mall, or in grandmother's house the characteristic have to be consistent. So example, the child is disruptive in school, uh, disturbing their classmate. Uh, at home also, the same thing. He, uh, he or she will be disruptive and also disturbing their siblings. So ADHD is a long life disorder. However, uh, with proper intervention and support from family, peers, and society, children with ADHD often grow to be successful adult ADHD.
Okay. Over time, with proper intervention, with the proper um, support from the family, the peers and environment, they learn to cope, uh, to come up with strategies to overcome their difficulty. So I do hope today's sharing session has been beneficial to everyone. Um, if you do have any question, please you can answer. Uh, you can ask so in the comment section below, and I will try my best to answer them later. Okay. Okay. Just a short thing that I would like to um share with you all. So most sometimes uh people or parents or teachers will ask, how can we differentiate whether the child is escaping? or portraying ADHD characteristic. So first is to look at the behavior. Is it similar um, as the characteristic? So second is the behavior same or consistent throughout multiple setting. Okay, is it the same in school? Is it the same at home? So example, giving the child a writing task. So the child, the child can be fidgeting or move around while sitting down and rush through the activity. Then you give another activity, to so Play-Doh, something the child enjoy. However, the child still fidgeting, you know, and have trouble to sit through the activity. Okay? So it is important to know what does the behavior serve as. Sometimes it may seem as the child is escaping, but it may be not. Okay, so often children with ADHD are misunderstood. It's not that they want to misbehave, but it's just that sometimes the impulsiveness in them is difficult for them to control. Okay, hence it's really important for, um, for them to have a proper intervention um, to help them to cope with their difficulty. Right, so I guess that's all for today. I do hope today's sharing session is beneficial to everyone. Please do visit our Facebook page as um, there are a few videos that I talk about autism, challenging behavior in autism, and also dyslexia. Um, next week, um, I'll be sharing some parenting tips uh, on how we can help children with ADHD cope with, daily, with their daily life. So, till, till then. Take care and stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.